Impossible is a word to be found only in the Dictionary of Fools. These were the words of the legendary military commander Napoleon Bonaparte. Known for his unparalleled ambition and strategic prowess, he defied the odds throughout his life. Napoleon is ranked among the most influential people on earth, which may sound hard to believe now, but by the end of this video, you'll think otherwise. A new software program developed by Google engineers Charles Ward and Stephen Skeener ranks Napoleon Bonaparte second on the list of the most influential people in history, right between Jesus Christ of the Christian faith and Prophet Muhammad of the Islamic religion. On the 23rd of February 1796, Napoleon was appointed commander-in-chief of the Italian army. At the head of the army, he inflicted a crushing defeat on the larger armies of the combined forces of the Kingdom of Sardinia and Austria, making him famous as one of the best commanders of the Republic. He then initiated an invasion to destroy British trade routes with India, a feat most people at the time did not believe possible. No commander came close to achieving as much as he did. Bonaparte had defeated his opponents with incredible ferocity and skillfully blackmailed his allies, rising to become the most powerful man in Europe. Twenty years later, when he was on top of the world, Napoleon would begin a descent into failure as swiftly as he ever thought possible. But let's first start with The Rise of Napoleon it would be no exaggeration to say that the story of Napoleon Bonaparte surging up the hills of power is one of the most captivating narratives in history. Napoleon was born on August 15, 1769 in Ajaccio, and his birth name was Napoleone di Buonaparte, reflecting his Italian heritage. He was the second of eight children born to Carlo Buonaparte, a lawyer, and Letizia Ramolino. His family was of minor noble status, which provided him some advantages in education and career opportunities. While in his twenties, Napoleon quickly demonstrated his military prowess. During the French Revolution, he aligned with the revolutionaries and rose through the ranks. In 1799, Napoleon seized his moment, orchestrating a coup d'etat that installed him as the first consul of France, consequently making him the head of state. He was only 29 by this time. Five years later, Napoleon crowned himself emperor. With the mantle of emperor now resting on his shoulders, Napoleon set his sights on expanding France's influence across Europe. His armies swept across the continent, achieving victory after victory against a succession of adversaries. All through his lifetime, he led the French army into 80 battles and recorded a 90% victory rate. But what was Bonaparte's hidden weapon, and what accounted for the high rate of military success? Napoleon's military strategies It takes not one or two, but a combination of exceptional strategies to pull off such consistent victories. Napoleon was a master player in the game. The defeat of Austria at the Battle of Marengo in 1800 was the start of his domination of Europe. He only faced serious opposition from Britain, who won the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 and ended Napoleon's threat to attack England. One of the hallmarks of Napoleon's military approach was his ability to rapidly concentrate his forces at the decisive point of the battlefield, something he called the mass of forces. By identifying and exploiting the weaknesses in his opponent's lines, Napoleon could overwhelm them with a concentrated assault, disassembling their formations and forcing them to respond by withdrawing. But this approach kind of flopped because his enemy soon got used to it and even used it against him. His infantry tactic was another key element of Napoleon's success as emperor. Their biggest advantage was that they would always outnumber their enemies in all of their major battles of the 18th century. He understood what speed and mobility could do in leaving his opponent alarmed and confused. They focused on their use of artillery and had no use for marching in lines. Instead, they attacked in columns. This made each unit of the army an attacking threat on the field. Perhaps most significantly, Napoleon was a master of combined arms warfare. 
integrating infantry, cavalry, and artillery to create a formidable fighting force. His use of artillery in particular was revolutionary, with his guns providing devastating firepower that could break up enemy formations and support the advance of his infantry and cavalry. Napoleon's brilliance was not limited to the battlefield. He was also a skilled logistician, ensuring that his armies were well supplied and maintained a high level of morale and discipline, creating beasts out of soldiers. He even has a popular quote that says, Moral force rather than numbers decides victory. His attention to detail and the overall organization of his forces contributed greatly to his military successes. Organizational skills One of the most obvious changes during the Napoleonic era was the increase in the size of the French army and, subsequently, the armies of other European countries. Under Bonaparte, French resources for the army were devoted with unprecedented consistency in the period 1800 to 1811. Napoleon collected 1,300,000 conscripts and in the period 1812 to 1813, another 1,600,000. The military historian Professor Hugh Strachan commented on this period, the masked lion gave France numerical superiority over her enemies, a seemingly inexhaustible reservoir of manpower that enabled her to take two or three times as many casualties as her opponents. The enormous size of Napoleon's army necessitated a better system for its organization and use. Napoleon introduced the corps system, which became one of his most enduring achievements. Although the concept of organizing armies into divisions and corps had been developed before the French Revolution, Bonaparte redesigned the system so that it worked many times more effectively than before. He achieved this through decentralized maneuvers and centralized control. By moving corps separately but within range of support, Bonaparte was able to increase the speed of movement, reduce the rate of employment in battle, and reduce the burden of logistical support. He also developed an efficient headquarters that could manage the flow of communication between the individual elements and control them effectively. Due to its structure and supporting staff, the Corps operated effectively both as separate units and jointly. Both Napoleon's organizational system and tactical maneuver techniques are still studied and used in modern armies. Napoleon's hidden weapon was that he used some of the best experts and research to improve his strategies and techniques. For example, during his campaign in Egypt, he took with him a group of scientists who contributed to the discoveries and reorganization of the local administration. This integration of knowledge and scientific approaches is reflected in the creation of the Napoleonic Code, which modernized French law and had a lasting effect on legal systems around the world. Even when he spent heavily on his imperial palaces, he still sat down and did the math to ensure he didn't leave his empire being chased by debt. Political acumen Adding to the arrows in his quiver, Napoleon possessed a remarkable political wit that permitted him to keep power under his fingertips. He was a skilled negotiator, adept at forging alliances and manipulating the political grounds to his advantage. During his lifetime, he introduced numerous reforms. First, he reformed the French administration, codified French law, and established the first French central bank, the Banque de France. That wasn't all. In May 1802, he formed the Legion of Honor to encourage civilian and military achievements. This order ranks as the highest decoration in France to this very day. He introduced three French constitutions which marked the reintroduction of a hereditary monarchy system of government. His reign also had a huge impact on the educational system. He laid the foundation of what we know today as secondary and tertiary education in France and across 80% of Europe. While Napoleon's political acumen was a cornerstone of his reign, it was his military brilliance that truly cemented his legacy. The Battle of Austerlitz, 1805 
The Battle of Austerlitz, often referred to as the Battle of the Three Emperors, was a decisive victory for Napoleon over the combined forces of the Austrian and Russian empires. The battle was, yet again, a show of Napoleon's tactical brilliance as he expertly maneuvered his troops to exploit the weaknesses of his opponents. Knowing that his troops were largely outnumbered, Napoleon planned to lure the Austro-Russian forces into a trap. He did so by feigning weakness and withdrawing his center. This caused the Allied forces to advance, only to be met with a devastating counterattack from Napoleon's flanks. The result was a crushing defeat for the Allies with over 27,000 casualties compared to just 9,000 for the French. The rest was history. The Battle of Jena Auerstedt 1806 The Battle of Jena Auerstedt was a series of two battles fought on the same day, in which Napoleon's forces decisively defeated the Prussian army. The first battle fought at Jena saw Napoleon's troops overwhelm the Prussian forces led by Prince Hohenlohe. The second battle at Auerstedt involved the main Prussian army under the command of King Frederick William III, which was also routed by the French. The victory at Jena Auerstedt demonstrated Napoleon's ability to coordinate multiple simultaneous engagements and to capitalize on the weaknesses of his allies quickly. The Battle of Wagram, 1809 The Battle of Wagram was a two-day engagement in which Napoleon's forces defeated the Austrian army led by Archduke Charles. The battle was characterized by its scale and intensity, with over 300,000 men engaged on both sides. Napoleon's strategy at Wagram was to gradually wear down the Austrian forces using his superior numbers and artillery. He also exhibited his trademark flexibility, adapting his tactics as the battle progressed to counter the Austrians' attempts to outmaneuver him. The victory at Wagram was another proof of Napoleon's ability to coordinate and control large, complex military operations. The Fall of Napoleon On June 18, 1815, Napoleon loses the Battle of Waterloo because Marshal Grouch's reserve corps is drawn off in pursuit of Field Marshal Blücher's retreating Prussian army. The Prussians make a detour and arrive on the battlefield at the critical moment to support the British forces commanded by the Duke of Wellington. After the loss, Napoleon returns to Paris to find that the legislature has turned against him. Realizing that his position was untenable, he abdicated in favor of his son on the 22nd of June. Three days later, he left Paris and took up residence in Josephine's former palace at Malmaison. About 28th of June, the Prussian army was at Senlis, north of Paris. When Napoleon learns that Prussian troops have orders to capture him dead or alive, he flees to Rochefort, planning an escape to the United States. It turns out, however, that it is too late for any plans because British ships blockade the harbour. So on July 15, 1815, Napoleon Bonaparte surrendered to Frederick Maitland. Napoleon is exiled to the island of St. Helena. There he was accompanied by his retinue of 27 men. On August 7, 1815, the former emperor left Europe aboard the ship Northumberland, accompanied by nine ships and 3,000 soldiers who would take care of his supervision. They arrived in Jamestown on the 17th October. Napoleon is billeted at Longwood House, a former summer residence of the Governor-General, heavily guarded by the British. The heir to the British throne, Princess Charlotte, was his ardent admirer, and he had high hopes that she would pardon him, but the princess died in 1817. The new governor, Hudson Law, restricted Napoleon's freedom even further, placing limits on his walks and requiring him to appear before the officer of the guard twice a day. Napoleon's condition deteriorated significantly in 1819, when he began to suffer chronic pain and swelling in his legs. In March 1821, he deteriorated to the point that he foresaw his own end. On the 13th of April, he dictated his will and died on the 5th of May 1821. Despite his incredible achievements, Napoleon is mainly remembered for his unwavering cruelty.
but he seems like a ruler with a gentle hand when we compare him to Cleopatra, the ruthless military and political leader before whom all trembled in terror. Learn her true story shrouded in murder, betrayal, and blackmail. Just click the thumbnail on the screen now, and we'll see there in a second.